This is Billy Ruth Hopkins Futurici on KCIW 100.7 on your FM dial, right here in beautiful downtown Brookings, where almost every day is a beautiful day and we can always choose to say yes. Life is indeed very, very good. Well, you may remember that this is a work of pure, unadulterated allegorical fiction, or what J.R.R. Tolkien liked to call feigned history. So, sit back, relax, suspend all disbelief, and let's continue with our tale. Gaga's stories about how she met Grandpa Joe? I mean, I've seen his pictures. He was out of this world, the way Grandma Gaga tells it. After they met, two weeks later, they were standing in front of the Justice of the Peace in Salida. She always laughs when she tells this part. She says, Oh, you should have seen my folks howling at the moon. Even my brother Elijah drummed for months, thinking I'd come back got the whole reservation to drum while they ran around trying to track us down, but we's gone. Joe enlisted and went to San Diego till he was shipped off to Nam. <laughs> I can hear her now. Oh, she, then she says, oh, I was in this little hole in the wall in the basement apartment in San Diego. I got myself a dog for company and waited for Joe to come back. But he never did. Well, Zirko and I have heard that story since we were babies. Yeah. But Joel never did make it back from Nam. And then, my, I guess my mom was born right about the time the officers came and knocked on Grandma Gaga's front door. Yeah. She's been telling that story forever. Then, what happens? She gets stuck in this little rock shop with UFO tourist junk and all the UFO stuff and she called it the fountain. The fountain of transformation and peace is what she always told me. She always says, Well, careful what you wish for, Angela. Careful what you wish for. It's almost like the story of Angelita and Shivano. Funny. Sometimes, I, I think I've heard that story so many times, sometimes I feel like I was Angelita. Oh, maybe you were, Angela. Maybe you were. Whoa, whoa, what's going on here? What, 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 what did I just hear? What are those voices? What, well, where are we? What's going on? How, how did we get here to Santa Cruz all of a sudden? I can't tell what's real and what's a dream anymore. We're all dancing in the living room. Zirko and I are about five. Ho, oh, a thurgis. What's going on? Yeah. As to swing you, Angela, your fantasy and your dream. Oh, yeah, now I see Dad. Sergeant Sal Perez, what a handsome guy. But wait, he's in Afghanistan. He never made it home. Yeah, porque siempre tienen quieras estos humanos. Why do human beings always have to start wars? If they would only follow the way of the Thurgis, my way, the way of love and peace and harmony. Well, the Thurgis is right. Don't go blaming wars on me. Oh, look, Angela needs another divine intervention. Hey, that's my specialty. Meow, pues Angela, Grandma Gaga cree que es posible que eras Angelita hace siglos y perdiste a Shavano por el wormhole llegaste aquí en el planeta de Aetherius. For those of you, dear listeners, who don't understand Spanish, Aetherius is trying to tell Angela 
that she used to be Angelita centuries ago, and that she and Shavano got lost in a wormhole and went to the planet of Aetherius. Now watch as we slowly morph into a full color animation at the entrance to my divine dark matter domain and the University of Higher Consciousness. Dreams can be really crazy, right? Just look at those old, broken down, worn out signs hanging above an ancient arched interior. And look, there's Etheria. She's looking a lot like Wisteria. She's in a rehearsal with her ethereal choir. They're all singing a dissonant fugue. We are the spaces between all forms. All forms shall fade, only we shall abide. Only the spaces shall abide. We are the heuristic cognitive affective transformation device, a functionally unified system of living selection. We are the spaces between all forms. Only the spaces shall abide. Only we shall abide. Ethereus ethereal choir is sounding pretty good, huh, Pop? Oh, they are indeed, Mother of Thunder. They are indeed. Now, let's see what Wanda's watching on TV. Oh, it looks like Rachel got some breaking news about... Oh, my heavenly stars! Can you beat that, Mother? There's been another alien sighting in Crestone. Let's go check it out. Just look at that full moon through the front window, creating a spectrum of rainbows through the many multifaceted crystals on display tables there in the fountain. Grandma Gaga is examining the large crystal ball that if Serge's Angela and Zerko were tossing in the air a few days ago. She's talking on the phone with Wisteria. Let's listen in. It's just like that girl to pull and act like this, Mom. Are you sure she's not with you? Mom, oh, and, oh, and and where where do, is that cat of yours? That cat's not here either. Angela's always making up stories about if they're just talking to her in Spanish and even Japanese. I, I thought she'd be all over all that stuff by this age. She's 17. All those imaginary friends, weird stories. She'll get into real trouble one of these days. Well, hmm, third just doesn't speak Japanese, far as I know, Wisteria. Well, hey, I wonder if Thurgis has been on his computer again. His, her, it's. Ooh, Wanda finally notices the TV through the crystal ball. Breaking news from Rachel catches her attention. Now she's picking up the remote, increasing the volume. She gets her glasses, peers closer to the TV. Just stop. Well, just stop worrying, Wisteria, and take your medicine. You know, the, the you know, kids, I, I, I was just like Angela when I was her age. She'll be back soon. Besides, Thurgis will take care of her. Mom, that cat can't do anything to help. I know my daughter. She'll do anything for kicks. Disappeared for a couple of weeks, years ago, remember, when she was 14? Don't, well, don't remind me, Wisteria. That's how come you and Senora well ended up together when you was out looking for her. How could I forget, Mom? She was sick for a week after she came home, soaking wet. Uh, well, wonder where is she? I wonder, what if they were kidnapped? Well... Wisteria, who would kidnap a cat? Come on, Wisteria, let's let's just calm down. You know what the doc says. I don't know where you got that high blood pressure from, but it sure wasn't the hell from my side of the family. Stop worrying so much. They're probably out howling at the full moon. It's a, not a school night. Cut her some slack. Oh, Mom, Mom, you're always going to 
get them in trouble. If anything happens to them, you are going to be in real trouble, Mom. Me? Me? Oh, what I do here? Oh, and Zirko's not going places with her anymore anyway, by the way. What? When, when did that all happen, Mom? Ancient history, Wisteria, ancient history. Well, since he broke his leg out there in the sand dunes. Well, that was over a year ago. Yeah, well, Zirkle's still holding a grudge. Evidently, Jennifer was showing off for that boy, Chris. You know, the one who's the eagle dancer in the powwows? Well, he's half Japanese. And, well, she kind of went flip-flop over Chris, and, and that made Zirkle fall all the way down them big sand dunes. Oh, Mom, you mean that Japanese boy she's dating now? I, I, and I'm just hearing about it? Uh, well, yeah, half Japanese, Chris, yeah, half, half Japanese. He's the eagle dancer at the powwows there in Slide Inn. Oh, I'm sure they told you. If your nose wasn't always in that stupid book, Master and Margarita, you'd have remembered it. Oh, Mom, really? That's just not fair. Why, well, I wouldn't worry about it. Water under the bridge by now. It's not like it was some kind of world war. Well, Mom, I'm sure Zirko and Angela will patch things up eventually. They always do. Zirko's always been bullied with that short leg and his stutter, and all because of the Taliban poisoning every well in Zephyr's village. And Zephyr told me how it poisoned her parents and almost took everyone out in the whole village. She would have died, too, if Sam hadn't begged Sal to forge that marriage certificate and, and get her onto that cargo transport just before they both... <sighs> Sam didn't even know Zephyr was pregnant. It's always some war, Mom. Always some war takes takes everyone we love, doesn't it? I know, darling. And just when Sal and Sam were both about to come home, too. Yeah, Mom, and I never got to even know my dad because of some war. I know, darling. I know. Oh, Mother Thondra, I should have done better. Seems like women always suffer the most because of wars. The eternal human dilemma, it seems. Just look at all that black and white footage from the beginning of time. It's not my fault men are so power hungry. Well, Mom, it's a miracle Zephyr even found us after Sal and, and Sam died. It surely is, Wisteria. It surely is. And, and anyway, how come Angela tells you all this stuff and not her own mother, Grandma Gaga? You, you and your weird stories. Weird stories? What, like what? You, you know what I mean, Mom. UFOs and crystals and all your talk about aliens and out-of-body experiences. Th these dreams, Wisteria, dreams. I tell them about my dreams, not alien trips on the astral plane. Well, whatever, now, astral plane. Now, see, see, see there, Mother? Now, that's exactly what I'm talking about. If you don't stop all this, I'm going to ban Angela from ever going over there. Yeah, don't listen. Wiz, I told you, they had a falling out. Kids ha at their age have fallen out, and, and anyway, Zephyr likes him to come over here and, and watch TV, and besides, and, and besides, oh, oh wait, oh, wait, just a sec, hold on there, Wisteria, turn, turn on your TV, Wisteria, Rachel's got some story here about aliens, and they're talking to some hippie campers out there about something they saw last night, call, I'll bet you, call, call you later. Well, Richard, here we are out there. You've got someone who is flirting with some mythical fantasy. Let's hear what they have to say. Well, thank you, Rachel. Well, not much we can confirm for our viewers right now, but I've been talking with some folks who were camping out here last night, and they're telling us, well, this may seem hard to believe, Rachel, but... They're saying they saw a spaceship land right over there, just beyond that large sand dune. 
they insist it wasn't just the full moon. And they also saw, clearly saw, a big pink flying saucer hovering over Mount Shibano to the north of here. And well, <laughs> an, an alien cat with an alien companion descending into the mountain, right? Where, as legend has it, right? Where there's a crack in the heart of the Angel of Shivano. I know it sounds crazy, Rachel, but let's listen to what they have to say. They were clearly shaken up a bit. <laughs> no man, no man. They were being beamed up. Not down. I mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I was, I was stoned and all, but, but yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I mean, there was clear as day. I mean, <laughs> right up there, uh, around midnight, the moon was shining right there on the Angel of Shivano. That's when I saw him. Hey, 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 Sierra, Sierra, turn that down. Turn that music down so I can talk to this here reporter dude. <laughs> so, so, up, not down. Okay, just what, what was it exactly that you saw, sir? Um, can I... Can, can you describe it for us? I most certainly can. A and this is this is not the first time either, I can tell you that. But I I never seen an alien cat before, just little greys, you know, just them little greys. Oh, alien cat. Little greys? Yeah, yeah, little greys. They're the good ones. They're they're not the big Venusian lizard types, so I mean, that's cool, right? Well, I would not characterize it as cool, but do continue. Uh, what is your name, young woman? Sierra. My name's Sierra, so here, here we were, just roasting marshmallows and making some more, you know, squishing in between two graham crackers, some chocolate, you know, like we used to do in Girl Scouts, and... And, and he don't give a about some more Sierra. He just, just tell him what you seen. Jeez, Mom, back off. I'm getting to it, God. Yes, yeah, so, so here comes this huge pink spaceship, like like a mothership, you know, with, with lights coming out of the bottom and everything, and it's beaming right down there down onto the Guardian of Shivano, and where his heart is cracked wide open, you know, like the story says, you know. Oh no, I confess, uh, I don't know. What story? <laughs> that's, hey man, that's not the deal, man. You know, huh, hey, hey, you, know, you, don't know, you don't need to know why his heart was broke open. It's just that it was. Let's hear her explain what she's seen. So you didn't see it either of you, uh, ma'am or uh, sir, uh, what with just Sierra? Yeah, yeah, that's right. They were both in the tent. Mom's full of <laughs> She never saw a thing last night. I stayed out here to look at the moon. It was full. It was beautiful. And, the, and there wasn't no clouds at all in the sky. And, and oh, my God, it was so beautiful. And the stars were so clear. I mean, out here in the middle of nowhere, you can, you can see them real clear, you know, right there, there. See, you know where Orion's belt would be, and then right there, right there, just a little bit to the right. I, I even saw the Pleiades, the Seven Sisters, you know, perfectly clear, you know, and you know, and that that just about never happens. And and then I saw this shooting star, and it lasted a really long time. And then and then when I looked over to the Shivano, I saw this huge pink spaceship, and it and it beams going down there right through the crack in his heart. But then, then, that's when I saw the alien cat and a really skinny alien chick with a backpack. I mean, I think it was a girl. It's pretty hard to tell from this far away, but they they were all being beamed up into that huge mothership. And then it zipped away, look at his butt. My ears started ringing like crazy. And I thought my head was gonna explode, but then I just, this is, it was gone. And I never seen anything like that before, never. My ears are still like really ringing. Well, there you have it, Rachel. 
Back to you. Wait, uh, yeah, but wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, but wait. Wait, their, their, their television guy. That, uh, wait. Then we all seen it landing this morning, right over there at the whoo, base of this mountain. Whoo, whoo, I'm still a little stone. And, and the little lake with that frozen fountain in the middle, right over there. And the, and that cat, that, that, that alien cat, whoo, and that skinny little girl come tumbling out like, like they was spit right out of the middle of the frozen fountain. Oh, oh, wait. Now, now you're telling me that the cat is not alien and the other one is a girl, not an alien either? How should they know? How should we know, man? We're just telling you what we seen, man. It was red. Red. Right. And... And what about your ears, young lady, um, Sierra? What about your ears? Are your ears still ringing? Well, let me see. Oh, uh, yeah, no, yeah, no, not really. Oh, I'm not sure. All right then, Rachel, back to you. Hoo, 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 hoo. Rad indeed. What they seen. Thank you, Richard. We'll certainly keep our feelers out for other threats that we can start pulling. Okay, this just in, people. Breaking news from our man in Kiev on that developing story about the missing American journalist held in a Ukrainian prison. We'll keep an eye out and get back to you with updates as soon as they come in. Well, psh. holy galactic stars. I better head on over to Sand Lake. I, I bet that's where Angela and the third just got to. Likely to freeze to death out there. Maybe I ought to call the cops. Ooh, no, better not. What if they had been abducted? Hmm, no. No, unless that really was a UFO last night. What? Well, no, don't be crazy old rock lady, Wanda Hopkins. Oh, mother, I can't stand to walk. Well, come on, Pop. Don't turn it off. We need to keep track of Angela and the Thurges. So, so when they get to Ethereus, they'll figure out how to rescue Anhelita and Lizard Zerko. Otherwise, she'll never figure out how to save Earth from final destruction. Oh, Mother, this is all just too complex for me. I can't keep up. I think I'm losing control. And what about a Thurgis? A Thurgis is supposed to show Angela the way to peace and love and harmony. Are we doomed again? Oh, Pop, don't be so dramatic. Hand me over the remote for crime and his sake. For, for being God, sometimes you're downright useless. And me, I feel virtually invisible around here most of the time. As for you, Lilith, Lilith. Go get some clothes on, girl. You're not in paradise anymore. Psh. Looks like I'm going to have to start taking charge around here from now on. Listen up, everyone. Well, Thurgis, you got to get Angela home. Her mom is freaking out. Yeah, looks like it's deja vu, Angela. Deja vu all over again. It's happening again. Time to get home before your mom has another heart attack. Well, uh, well, now, now, what, what, did, did I wake up? Or should I wake up? Well, Angela, it's your dream. Just try it and see, meow. Oh, okay, so, well, since, since you say we've done all this before, let's just fly over to mom's house. I think she's getting pretty worried about us, don't you? Yeah, it worked. Oh, hey, we're back home now. Quiet now. Sounds like Mom's on the phone with Senor Roel. Okay. Yeah, Cesar, I understand, darling. They're in some terrible trouble. I can see, I can feel it. It's all because of Mom and her crazy stories about UFOs and their wild dreams. That girl's going to get grounded when she gets back. Oh, wait, wait, Cesar, I think I heard something. Oh, hey, I, I got to go. Okay, I think it's Angela and the Thurgis. They just came home through the back door. That 
girl is going to get in such trouble. Oh, thank God, Angela. There you are. Thank God you're not dead. Where in God's name have you been? I was just about to ask Senor Roel to, to help me look for you again. Oh, you were grounded, young lady. And this time, no more of those internet games and absolutely no more listening to your grandmother and her wacky Wanda tales. Uh, Mom, oh my poor butt. What's your language, young lady? I was sure you'd been abducted by one of those online gamers pretending to be someone he's not. Oh, Mom, I'm sorry. But please don't ban me from Grandma Gago's again. We won't do it again, I promise. Well, just maybe. It's just that... Just don't go scaring me to death like that again, Angela. I nearly had another heart attack just thinking about all those terrible things that could have happened to you. We live in such a crazy world, you know, and I, I, I just... I know, Mom, I know, but... You know, you worry too much. Stress will cause those heart attacks. You know what Doc says? It's really bad for your health. Stop worrying. That, my dear, is just the point. I love you so much, and I couldn't bear the thought of anything terrible happening to you. Oh, I love you too, Mom. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Just don't ban me from Grandma Gaga's again like you did when I was 14. That was the worst. I need her as much as I need you. Well, all right, darling. You and Zerko can still go over to the fountain if you want to, but just don't believe a word of what she says about UFOs. And don't believe her crazy dreams. Yeah, por supuesto, Wisteria. No hay que preocuparse, Wisteria. Huh. What did I hear? Did I hear... Well, don't go following that cat when he runs off. Yeah, por supuesto, Wisteria. Ya no vamos otra vez al planeta Ethereus. What? Wait, what? Did I hear that cat say something about... The planet of Ethereus? Well, dear listeners, now the cat's out of the bag. I wonder what's going to happen next time when Angela and Ethereus find their way to the planet of Ethereus. And just what dangers await them there? Will they be able to rescue Angelita and reunite her with her soulmate, Shavano? Is any of this really happening? Or is it all just one of Grandma Gaga's wild dreams? Oh, so many crazy red threads. Love, war, misunderstandings. Let's hope they can all be unraveled. And we can reweave it into a multicolored, multidimensional, magical carpet of love and compassion. See you next time. We are the spaces between all forms. All forms shall fade. Only we shall abide. Only the spaces shall abide. We are the spaces between all forms. All forms shall fade. Only we shall abide. Only the spaces shall abide. This is Billy Ruth Hopkins for Ricci with KCIW 100.7 on your FM dial right here in beautiful downtown Brookings where every day is an awesome day and we can always choose to say yes. Life is indeed very, very good. Remember to catch us on podcast at kciw.org forward slash Angelita's Wings. That's A-N-G-E-L-I-T-A-S dash wings. Until next time.